Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeep with cool guys. So for today's episode, we're going to rebuild our wheel hub, locking hub. Earlier models, uh, I think it was an 81, they switched over to a 5 bolt wheel hub. Pre-81, or 82, I can't remember exactly, it was 6 bolts. Um, but in the process of renovating this Jeep, I wanted to make sure that I had taken a look at everything. So I took this thing apart. Um, wasn't anything wrong with it, but I just wanted to check in on it. And found some problems. Uh, here are all the pieces that make up your wheel hub. You've got your cap, uh, your locking gears, um, your uh, switch, I guess you could call it, your lever, um, seal cap, main tension spring, um, lever, and a couple uh, tension washers that all fit into this piece. My problem was, is that when I took this apart, actually let me show you what this thing looks like. This is what it looks like all assembled. But I was finding that this outer ring, this outer gear, the teeth on the inside had worn down, I guess from rubbing on this inner um, gear to the point where the tension washer wasn't able to hold it and this thing was just popping off not that that was a big deal but it wasn't right and my concern would be that it would be in a position to where it wouldn't go back in or out of four-wheel drive two-wheel drive whatever that may be so I had to figure out what I was going to do about this well I found a pair of used six bolt um, hubs and outside of the cap, they're all the exact same components. So let's put this thing back together. Start with your cap. And then you want to gather this thing. And this, this I don't even know what you'd call this. This is the, the piece that connects to the actual lever. Um, and this has a movable threaded washer on the inside of it. So this is in two-wheel drive. And then when you rotate it, it goes into four-wheel drive. And when you see this all put back together, or do it yourself, it'll totally make sense. So what you want to do is you want to start with this. <clears throat> make sure that your cap, or your uh, threaded washer, is all the way out on the edge here. Um, I guess forward, because we're going to start it in two-wheel drive. Then you put it inside of this main uh, spring housing. There's little grooves on the inside of this, or there's, um, yeah, there's grooves on the inside of the plastic housing that fit that ring that fit right inside of there. Then you'll also notice, if you take a look at it, that the inside of your lever has that hexagon that fits right on top of this. So you want to get these aligned. Take your cap. This is going to go down this way. And you're going to have to apply pressure from behind. So I've just made a stack of nuts and washers to push up. I want to look inside of here and get the point of that hexagon pointing towards the two-wheel drive notch. So once you get that figured out, get that aligned. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to rotate that plastic threaded washer. Because if you do that, then you won't be able to either get it out of two-wheel drive or into four-wheel drive because the, the spring will have released or compressed too far. So once you get that aligned, make sure you got your uh, plastic housing inside of the grooves of the cap. Push it down over the top of that. Uh, I don't have it aligned. Hold on. All right, let's take a different approach at this. Take the spring off the plastic housing. I was having some major issues with getting it aligned, and it was kind of getting annoying. So take it off the plastic housing. 
Make sure your washer is really far forward, almost at the end of the threads. Fit it into the plastic housing, flip it upside down, and align that point with <coughs> the two-wheel drive marker. Then, place it on top of this, to where you see how this is lined up with the number two, then we're in good shape. I'm going to press that down because the, the rubber O-ring around that plastic housing should fit right on here. Then, take this bad boy, push that down, apply pressure through the cap, put the screw in. Don't have to go really super tight. Definitely want to go tight enough to where it's not going to come out. So now at this point, you have your locking hub, at least the, the pop part, or the, uh, the cap part. Go ahead and use uh, move it back and forth between four and two a couple times, because if you haven't gotten your washer in the right place, the thing will pop off when you put it in a four-wheel drive because you don't have it threaded in the right area. So now it gets easy. Take your inner gear, put uh, the metal washer um, on the thinner part, narrower part of the top of the cap. Then you can put the plastic housing on top of that. Put your retaining ring into the groove. Once you get that locked in, then you have this all nice and composed. Works out pretty well. Should look just like that. Now, take the secondary ring, or the spring, the secondary spring, put that over the top. <coughs> then you want to put your, your locking gear over the top of that. You can push that down so it actually fits into the threads. It makes it easier. And then simply put on your last retaining ring. Slide it into the groove. It's right there at the end. Sorry the lighting isn't all that great in here. Now, if everything is set up right, it should be like this. That retaining ring holds this outer gear, locking gear in place. The thing should spin freely and you have nice tension. And that's two wheel drive. That's four wheel drive. So essentially, this free spins when it's in two wheel drive. And then when you put it in a four wheel drive, it engages the actual axle, locks the hub. Then from there, pack this up full of some grease, some um, high temperature grease, lithium grease, and there's your hub. You're all good to go. Something to take in consideration when you're actually taking this apart to refurbish it. When you're taking out this screw here, realize that you've got this, you've got a spring that is that big compressed behind this thing. So, and the only thing that's holding it in place is that screw. So have this thing pointing down into some kind of a surface because what I learned is it will rock it all the way across and you definitely don't want to be looking at it because it's going to hit you in the face with a lot of force. So as I'll show you here, once you release that screw, wait for it. Hear that? And at that point, the thing pops out and it's been released. That's nasty. When you've got your hub put together, um, you can actually move your uh, locking switch arm, lever, your locking arm into four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive and when you do that you'll notice that this inner plastic ring slides up and down because that threaded plastic washer uses the spring to compress or release and you can see how it goes from two-wheel drive so then this spring presses this gear out further into the housing 
And then when you move it into four-wheel drive, you can see how it moves and expands and engages this gear. And then you're in four-wheel drive. Not a whole lot else to it. Once you get to this point, you're ready to install this on your vehicle. Or your Jeep. Or your CJ7. Because CJ7s are only the real Jeeps.